Hello guys. Welcome to Anime Sum Up. Today's anime is about a girl named Coco Hekmatyar, who is an arms dealer and a member of African Weapons Transport Division. She leads a squad of bodyguards with whom she travels the world conducting business. So without any further delay, let's start. Coco Hekmatyar personally recruits Jonathan. Jonah Marr before they travel en route to Eastern Europe, where a local government official has kept a shipment of HCLI MiG-29 fighter upgrades under lockdown from his country's air force for fear, it would lead to regional tension with its neighbors, Jonah protects Coco from the government's elite Voschkid 6 unit, with Sophia, Valmet Velmer and Lem Brick backing them up, as Coco heads to the harbor to secure the MiG-29 upgrades, which forces the official to give up, later, Coco is informed by HCLI that a rival arms dealer named Kloshkin is trying to sell Hind D's to the Air Force. Coco and Jonah, pretending to be the former's younger brother, visits Kloshkin to dissuade him. In truth, the meeting is a diversion to allow Valmet and Akahiko Tojo to convince the Air Force to cancel Kloshkin's deal, while Lem, Mao, Yugo and Lutz kill the snipers protecting him, as Kloshkin realizes too late that he has been fooled. Coco orders Jonah to kill him. Coco celebrates with her bodyguards over dinner where they welcome Jonah into their group, however, everyone except Jonah gets sick after eating his scrambled eggs. Coco and her team are en route to deliver weapons to a country south of Russia, but discover that the nation's forces led by Major Pollock, and the Russians are fighting over the country's oil pipeline. Coco is dismayed when Curry and his team from CCAT, Coco's rival weapons dealer, swing by as well. Coco wants to get out of the country as soon as possible since she does not deal with clients who pay on credit, however, Pollock wants her to deliver anti-aircraft weaponry for his army, and he will not take no for an answer. Left with no other choice, she agrees but secretly tells her bodyguards, they will rendezvous with Tojo and Valmet and escape through the border. Coco is forced to work with Curry after his bodyguards, Mildo and Lou kill Pollock's escorts, when Pollock's mountain infantry unit surrounds everyone in the building they are hiding. Coco and her team decides to face the unit, but she betrays Curry by telling the unit, that the people who murdered Pollock's escorts are inside the building. Before the group flees, despite Coco's escape, Pollock manages to build a fake SAM truck to fool the Russian military thanks to Coco's delivery. Two days later, Coco and Curry, and their respective teams, manage to flee the country, where Coco watches a news report at the airport of the war having a quick conclusion just as she predicted. In Dubai, Coco tells Tojo to give Jonah a math lesson, and then decides to go out shopping with Valmet. However, the assassin group orchestra, composed of teenage girl Chinatsu and her mentor Maestro, are hired to assassinate Coco, Jonah, who skips Tojo's lesson, saves Coco and Valmet from orchestra. As a gunfight ensues in downtown Dubai, Jonah and Valmet protect Coco from orchestra. While the latter easily kills Dubai police force officers responding to the shootout, Valmet is shot in the leg, to which Jonah responds by engaging Maestro in an open gunfire confrontation, in order for Valmet to escape with Coco. However, Lem drags Jonah back using a hook and rope, chastising the boy for needlessly sacrificing his life, while Jonah escapes with Coco. Lem holds off Orchestra, who soon runs out of ammo, and retreat to their pickup truck armed with an M2 Browning machine gun. Lem and Valmet, who conclude that Chinatsu has great observation skills and natural instincts, and is able to control the wild maestro, rendezvous with the rest of the team, and try to separate the duo before they reach Coco. Meanwhile, Jonah tells Coco how he thinks guns make people into monsters, and she thanks him for opening up to her. A flashback reveals that Chinatsu was a survivor of a killing spree at an opera caused by Maestro, who was impressed when she shot him from behind. Back in the present, Coco's bodyguards continue to protect Coco and Jonah. When orchestra performs a drive, by using the M2 Browning machine gun in their pickup truck, the team manages to destroy the truck, forcing Chinatsu and Maestro out into the open, where Lutz snipes down Maestro after he refuses to heed Chinatsu's warning. Chinatsu vows revenge against Coco before she escapes. Meanwhile, a CIA agent named Scarecrow, who has been hunting down Coco for weapons dealing, tries to have her arrested and deported, but due to her father's connections, the Dubai police force instead releases Coco, and covers up the shootout, the chief of police tells Coco, that she and her team are to be confined to their hotel for the time being, as she and Jonah return to their hotel, they have an in-depth discussion about arms dealing, three days later, Coco catches Chinatsu trying to infiltrate into the hotel, during their conversation, Coco offers Chinatsu to join her team, but Chinatsu refuses and tries to kill Coco, however, Chinatsu is shot to death by Lem with his sniper rifle from a distance, 
as Coco closes the eyes of the dead girl. Coco calls the chief of police to cover up Shinatsu's death, while a hidden Jonah is listening. While on a HCLI-owned cargo ship en route to Africa from Dubai, Jonah watches Lutz and Renato. R. Sochi test fire XM-8 rifle. When Coco is informed that her older brother Kasper Hekmatyar will be arriving to see her from another HCLI-owned cargo ship, when William Wiley Nelson is instructed to take Jonah away by teaching him a grammar lesson, the latter heads to the restroom to relieve himself. However, Casper heads to the restroom as well where Jonah attempts to kill him, but Casper's bodyguard Shaquita stops Jonah and disarms him, three months ago in Western Asia. Jonah was a child soldier in an infantry base where he took care of four orphans. He later learned that Malka, one of the orphans, died being used as a human probe to clear a path filled with landmines, sending him on a rampage and killing everyone in the base, including an arms dealer named Yusuf Gassid. Jonah is soon surrounded and disarmed by Shaquita, and Casper later told Jonah that Malka was sacrificed to build a road for profitable reasons. Jonah was then locked up in an empty cargo container for days. In the present, Coco makes Casper leave her ship after hearing about what happened in the restroom, having to apologize to Jonah for this. A few days later, Jonah wanders to the crow's nest of the ship, recalling that Casper, who was responsible for selling weapons that killed Jonah's parents, promised to send the orphans to Japan to live peaceful lives, in exchange that Jonah would become one of Coco's bodyguards in Europe. Coco and her team are en route to South Africa, when they are ambushed by Somali pirates, after her bodyguards defeat them. Coco heads to DIESA, a local arms fair, to meet with Dr. Minami, Miami Amata, who does not show up. Coco learns from Dr. Miami's assistant Malin that Dr. Miami and her bodyguard Makwena have gone off to the mountains to find butterflies. Later, Coco meets with Guoming Chen, the head of the Daxinghai company, and accepts his invitation to dinner, with Yugo accompanying her. Meanwhile, the rest of Coco's bodyguards head to the mountains to locate and protect Dr. Miami and Makwena. On the other hand, Karen Lowe of the Daxinghai company is covertly deployed to the mountains, with a small team of Daxinghai contractors to abduct Dr. Miami due to her extensive knowledge of robotics. Jonah starts the battle when he ruins the ambush of the Daxinghai faction, by randomly firing his assault rifle, causing a Daxinghai contractor to panic and return fire. This gives Coco's bodyguards the advantage over Karen's group, when Karen executes her subordinate for panicking. Valmet recognizes her combat stance and weapons of choice, and has a flashback of the time when she was still a UN peacekeeper. While Yugo watches Coco and Chen having dinner in Port Elizabeth, Valmet engages Karen in close quarters combat with Jonah and Lem, taking on the surviving Daxinghai contractors. Valmet eventually gains the upper hand, seeing Karen as a reminder of herself. When she had been severely wounded in Africa as a UN peacekeeper, Lem intervenes to stop Valmet from further harming Karen. Eventually, Coco's bodyguards secure Dr. Miami and Makwena, who are found in a field in the mountains full of butterflies. Furious that his Daxinghai contractors were defeated by Coco's bodyguards, Chen orders the assassination of Coco and Yugo in Port Elizabeth, but Scarecrow's assistant Chocolade manages to persuade her boss to help them escape on a Super Hind MKV helicopter after Coco talked to her. Coco is dismayed the next day, when Malin informs her that Dr. Miami and Maquena went out to scavenge shellfish at a beach. Coco and her bodyguards eventually arrives at Heathrow Airport in London, but not before having a minor problem with an airport security metal detector, when Jonah insists to the guard that he had been shot in the butt a long time ago. Jonah easily beats Lutz in a game of paintball, with tension rising between Middle Eastern Country A and European Country B. Coco attends Country B's embassy in London, where a contract bid is being held to decide which UAVs their country's military will buy, either HCLI's American Predators or Eurogroup's French Neurons. However, Amalia Torohovsky, a former actress and arms dealer for Eurogroup, gets a head start on Coco, when she manages to convince almost all of Country B's delegates to side with Eurogroup. Furious Coco later meets with Chocolate, and asks her to deliver some documents to her friends in the German military, with Coco doing nothing for two days. Amalia and Eurogroup, who have tapped Coco's phone and computer, believe they have won until they learn news, that both the German and Spanish military have decided to buy HCLI's predators, which convinces Country B to follow suit. Meanwhile, Coco has formed a front company that is purchasing Eurogroup stocks, as part of a hostile takeover. Realizing Coco has played them, Amalia has a secret meeting with her, unaware that Eurogroup mercenary snipers have followed them, and are planning to kill Coco. After talking about the similarities and differences between them, 
Amalia concedes defeat over the contract bid, while Coco agrees to sell back Eurogroup stocks to her at a 5% premium, but not before Valmet, Lutz and Wiley non-lethally neutralize the mercenary snipers. The team has some rest, and recuperation at the beach near the Adriatic Sea. Later during a science lesson, Mao shares with Jonah, that he is married with children, and he was discharged from his artillery unit, before being hired as one of Coco's bodyguards, something his children does not know. HCLI assigns Coco and her bodyguards to deliver artillery to the T Republic Army at the Balkans. Much to her annoyance, she is also tasked to sneak in 10 doctors from the humanitarian organization, outspoken doctors for humanity, led by Leon Riviere. He wants to treat the country's ethnic cleansing victims and expose the crimes of Serbian war criminal Dragan, Baldra Nikolaevic, leader of the Balkan Dragons militia, who has a strong influence over the nation's army due to his connections. The team's and 12 cargo airplane arrives at their location and delivers the artillery to the army without problems. However, Baldra and his militia arrive, tipped off about the doctors, and demands Coco to give them up. Coco refuses, leading to a standoff between the two sides, hoping to settle things peacefully. Riviere comes out and tries to talk to Baldra, but Baldra shoots Riviere and tries to kill him until Lem disarms Baldra. Left with no choice, Coco orders her team to kill the Balkan Dragons at Planina Airport. Coco's team eliminates the Balkan Dragons except Baldra, who escapes and takes Riviere hostage, knowing Baldra's militia will try to shoot them down. Once they leave the airport, Coco takes Mao's advice to take one of the artillery cannons into their plane. Once their plane leaves, the team manages to evade the militia's anti-air weaponry and destroy them, thanks to Mao shooting them with a flechette round. Coco calls and makes a deal with Scarecrow and Chocolade, that they get to capture Baldra in exchange for his $5 million bounty. She also realizes this was part of her father's plan to win favor with the outspoken Doctors for Humanity and the CIA, after safely delivering the rest of the Doctors to their destination near a refugee camp. Coco sends Lem, Mao and Wiley to ambush Baldra's convoy, rescuing Riviere, capturing Baldra and giving his location to Scarecrow and Chocolade, who sends a US Marine SOAR commando team to get him. With their job done, Coco's team flies out of the country. Coco's team prepare for their next deal with some members of the Italian Mafia in Alexandria, but Valmet leaves, wishing to take revenge on the man, who gouged her right eye and killed her subordinates, when she was an UN peacekeeper in Africa. After Chocolade reveals to her that Chen is this man, Valmet leaves the group unnoticed to confront Chen at his headquarters in North Africa, only to later learn that Jonah tailed her under Coco's orders. Meanwhile, Dominique, the leader of his crew of assassins, expresses to his companions Lilian and Gregoire his plan, to leave the contract killing business and open a restaurant, both agree with the idea, but first they must take one last job assigned to them, which is to assassinate Coco. While Valmet and Jonah get close to the Daxinghai company base, the assassins decide to take down the members of Coco's team one by one starting with Hugo, whom they label as the easiest target among them. Chocolade informs Coco that Chen was crippled after stepping on a landmine in the past, which explains why he prematurely aged. Later on, Coco's deal with the Mafia ends with her clients killed, after they tried to pay her with cocaine. Dominique's crew take advantage of Valmet and Jonah's absence to start their plan by having Lilian distracting the others, while Gregoire knocks out Lem and is about to decapitate Hugo. Hugo manages to hold off Gregoire long enough for Lem to knock him out. Coco and her bodyguards manages to subdue Dominique's crew, and agrees to let them go if they reveal who hired them. Back in North Africa, Valmet drugs Jonah, and heads towards the Daxinghai company base alone. As she kills the Daxinghai contractors protecting the base, she is saved from a sniper by Jonah, who manages to fight off the effects of the drug. Valmet finally confronts Chen, where they share some words before she kills him, finally avenging the deaths of her subordinates. But as Valmet and Jonah returns to Coco, a vengeful Karen shoots Valmet, who shields Jonah before Jonah guns down Karen. After waking up from the hospital several days later, Valmet learns Karen survived as well but mysteriously disappeared. Coco comforts Valmet by telling her that she was able to put the souls of her subordinates at ease. As they take a walk together, Coco talks to Jonah about the attempted hit on her and the team. Meanwhile, George, Bookman Black, the CIA chief of the European division, flies to Paris from Langley to meet up with his contact, who is none other than R. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.